I've been testing every Apple HomeKey lock you can get. These are locks you can open just by tapping your Apple Watch or your iPhone to the lock. Finally got my hands on the Level Lock Plus. This is an Apple HomeKit smart lock that works with HomeKey, so you can just tap your watch or phone, and it's the most discreet smart lock you can get. It actually just looks like a normal house lock, but there's a lot of smarts inside as well. You can unlock with your iPhone or Apple Watch. You can also just swipe your finger across the lock to unlock it. You can use NFC powered key cards. You can give friends and family temporary access just by sending them a link. Pretty easy to install, but it's also the most expensive home key smart lock you can get. So let's find out if it's worth it. I've been testing a bunch of smart locks, so swapping this one out was pretty simple. Took me about 30 minutes. Taking off the old locks easy, installing this deadbolt, pretty seamless. There is one part that's a little different where the actual smarts of the deadbolt inside the little circle thing actually slides into the deadbolt and there's a small screw you have to tighten to connect those. All the instructions, hardware, screws, and several different strike plates all come in the box. It's pretty straightforward. Now I ordered the matte black version and it comes in a variety of colors, which is nice. Most of these smart locks do not. The Akara U100 basically has one color. My Yale Assure 2 either comes in black or black with a silver border. So Level Lock probably has a color that you can buy that actually matches your house. One detail though is I wish these strike plates actually matched the color of the lock. All the strike plates and deadbolt plates that were in the box are all the silver color and I was replacing a black lock. You don't typically see the inside of your door frame, but if having everything match, including your strike plates is important to you, just keep that in mind. You probably will have to change out the strike plate as well. Most deadbolts have flat sides and just rounded tops and bottoms, but the level lock, because the battery is actually in that deadbolt, it has to be perfectly round. It's a perfect circle. And that means a lot of strike plates are not going to work with this deadbolt. I actually found out even after swapping out the strike plate that because I was installing this on an exterior patio door, there was actually some door that went into the deadbolt area and so it wouldn't go all the way in. Now that was a unique issue probably just because of my patio door. Keep it in mind, you do need full clearance in that little circle to make sure the deadbolt can go all the way in. Otherwise the entire installation went really smooth and they actually have a really clever way of putting on that interior locking paddle. It just snaps on and then it's pretty secure. But if you want to remove it, you actually have to use like a paper clip or a SIM card ejector tool, press a little button on the bottom, and then you can take off that rear locking mechanism. Now, when it comes to HomeKit setup, you don't even need to download the Level Lock app. You can do everything in the HomeKit app. You have the HomeKit pairing code right in the manual in the Level Lock box. Adds to the Home app, no problem. Get set up with HomeKey automatically if you already have that feature enabled. And then all the trusted contacts you have in your Apple Home can now unlock it with their iPhone and Apple Watch. Really cool. I found it paired really quickly and communication was pretty good. The Level Lock Plus is a Bluetooth only device. There's no thread and no Wi-Fi. That means a couple things. If you want to adjust any settings for the lock in the Level Lock app, you need to be in Bluetooth range of the device. And for certain features like the swipe touch to unlock, you also need to be very close to it. And you need to have location services on in the Level Lock app. I'll talk about that in a second. You'll also need the Level Lock app to pair some of those NFC card keys. It comes with two, sending invite codes, and worst of all, to turn off the sounds the lock makes, you need the Level Lock app. I wish these smart locks would just default to no sound at all. I don't want any lock making any chimes or jingles, but to turn off sounds, you need the Level Lock app. You can't do that in the HomeKit app. Now, once I installed the Level Lock app, there was actually a critical firmware update that I needed to do. That went pretty quickly and then I was good to go. And I will say, I actually had a lot of people comment on social media when I was testing this lock that they didn't have good experience with reliability. There might be a few reasons. One, because it's Bluetooth only, if you're using it just with HomeKit, it needs to be pretty near a HomeKit hub. That could be a HomePod mini, a large HomePod, or Apple TV. If it's not close to one of those kinds of devices, you might experience some connectivity issues when it comes to that Bluetooth HomeKit stuff. Now, the Yale Assure Lock 2 that I tested before, I got the Bluetooth only module as well, and you still have that Bluetooth range issue. If you ever wanna adjust settings, you have to be close to the lock, but that one actually has a Wi-Fi module upgrade you can get. The Level Lock Plus, there's no Wi-Fi option and no thread. I'm not sure what the holdup is. Maybe next year we'll see thread actually built into smart locks. These are the kind of devices that would really benefit. Thread is low energy, has greater connectivity and greater range, and then it could communicate with your home pods and other home devices much easier. We'll see. Also in the box, you do get two of those NFC card keys and two physical keys. Now, I actually struggled to get the NFC card keys programmed. You actually don't tap it to the lock to program. You use the Level Lock app, and then you tap the card key to the app in order to pair it. For some reason, it said that it was programmed correctly, but when I tried to tap the lock, it wouldn't work. It just kind of made a sound that it's not reading it. I've heard from other users that the NFC card keys were the best way to unlock this thing, so I don't know. This was my experience. I just couldn't get it to pair right away. Also, a word on rekeying. This lock is not really made to rekey if you want it to keep your current home key, like 
not home key the feature, but like physical key. So just keep that in mind. You're probably gonna wanna use the keys in the box for the level lock and then duplicate those physical keys for any friends or family that need a key. Now I did find using the lock reliable and fast. I typically open my smart locks with home key, means tapping my Apple Watch or my iPhone, and that all happened pretty quick. I actually found my Apple Watch unlocked it faster than my iPhone. I don't know what it was, but it responded very quickly. Now I do really like being able to swipe to unlock, and once you're nearby, close to the lock, the lock is communicating with the app, using that touch to unlock and lock, it's really cool. So in order for the touch to work, you need to have your precise location on, the app needs to know that you're actually near the lock within a certain radius, and it needs to be connected to Bluetooth directly to the lock. So this reliability is gonna be a little more hit and miss if you wanna do that touch to lock and unlock. I think it's great for when you're leaving the home and maybe you just wanna lock it quickly to swipe there because you've already been there and the lock knows you're home. But when you're coming home to unlock it, I found home key is probably the fastest way to do it. You can also lock or unlock from the Level Lock app, or you can do it from the Home app. I found this to be the slowest way to lock and unlock. If you're not right near the device, it has to communicate to your HomePods or Apple TVs, and then those need to communicate with the lock to actually lock and unlock it. So doing it by the app is possible, it's just the slowest method. Some other cool features of the Level Lock is you can get a level keypad, and it's actually a separate keypad. It doesn't have to be right by the lock. It has to be in Bluetooth communication distance, but if you don't like that huge chunky look of the keypad and lock all being on your door, it's nice to be able to put this somewhere else around the exterior of your home. The keypad also comes in several colors and it's a pretty slick look, I like it. It is an $80 additional charge to the lock. So you're getting into the above $400 range if you want a keypad and the level lock lock. Another cool feature is in the level lock app, if you were having a party or just wanted to give someone temporary access, you can add a pass. This could be for something like a single event, give it access to a specific level lock in your home or all of them. And then you can choose a date and time you want this pass to be active. Then you can send that link to people either via text message, they download the level lock app and they can be able to unlock your level lock lock just for that date and time. That's a pretty cool feature and you can add more NFC cards here in the app or add people that you'll invite and they can accept in the level lock app. Of course, if you're using HomeKit with your level lock plus, you don't need to do all that management in the Level Lock app. Any of the people you've added to your HomeKit home will automatically be able to lock and unlock it either from their devices or via home key on their Apple Watch or iPhone. So is the Level Lock Plus worth it? If you're buying from Level Lock directly, it's typically $350. On Amazon, again, we're right around the holidays, so this is gonna be a little cheaper. 280, but you'll see even its full price is 330 typically. Compared to other home key smart locks, this is my Yale Assure Lock 2, $210. Plus the keypad comes with the lock. Now, depending on your feature needs, this doesn't have a physical key option, but if you're really just looking for a home key and you love the touchpad, which I really like with having kids, especially my younger kids who don't have a device that are gonna be able to use home key, having that keypad really convenient. Then also just texting codes that you can create temporarily. It's a little easier for people than having to download an app and all that. The Akara U100 is under $200, still has home key, fingerprint scanner, keypad, and physical key. And then the Schlage encode is about $240. Again, that works with home key as well. But if your main priority is looks and you want a smart lock that doesn't look like a smart lock, the Level Lock Plus is probably your only option. And when it comes to color options, Level Lock Plus has the options. If you need something like a satin nickel, you want that gold look, this is probably gonna match your home decor the best. But keep in mind the strike plates are all one color. Overall, when it comes to usage, if HomeKit and HomeKey are your priority, I do find that this was reliable and worked really well. That's how I would use this lock. The touch thing is cool. Again, not as quick or reliable as HomeKey because it needs to talk to your location and Bluetooth and all that, but it's a nice feature to have. And if you can get the NFC key cards to work, that's a nice way to unlock it too, especially if you want to give that to a kid or family member. My personal preference when it comes to these locks that I've tried so far, I haven't tried the Schlage encode. So if you want me to try and review that, let me know down in the comments. I think it's the last home key lock that's on the market right now. My personal preference is the Yale Assure 2. I want to have a keypad on there. It just makes it easier for a lot of people and for kids. And home key is priority. I don't care about the physical key as much because there are other doors I can access in my house, plus my garage. And for the price, the Yale Assure 2. And you can actually add Wi-Fi later if you want. They sell the Wi-Fi module separately. So you can have that remote access from the Yale app or just easier access to edit the settings without having to be so close to the lock. And one word about the Akara U100. I ranked it pretty highly. I liked the lock at first, but battery life on this one is pretty abysmal. My Yale Assure lock I've had installed for a few months and I have not had to change the batteries yet. The Akara U100, it tells me pretty often that the battery is low. So you're gonna be changing that 
once a month, maybe once every other month, it does not last very long. And it's four AA batteries, which the Yale Shore Lock 2 also takes four, but for some reason it's just lasting longer. The Akara U100 is also talking to the Akara Hub, so that might have something to do with it. But because that battery life, home key, and built-in touchpad support, the Yale Shore Lock 2 is my current choice, unless, of course, you want the design of Level Lock, and in that case, I do find it works well with home key. If you have experience with these locks, let me know down in the comments. And if you've tried the Schlage Encode and you think it's worth me reviewing, I'd love to hear about it down there as well. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to check out my Yale Assure Lock 2 review. You can check that video out up here. And if you want to learn about some of my smart home automations that I think make it worth actually having a smart home and HomeKit devices, you can check out my top 10 automation video right here. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button before you go. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time.